Hello everybody and welcome to this Monte Carlo simulation tutorial within Python. Uh, we're going to be applying a model to generate future stock prices today, um, only given the daily volatility of an individual asset or portfolio of assets. So what is a Monte Carlo simulation? Essentially it's just a simulation of future outcomes. So there's a lot of ways you can go about tackling this problem, but I prefer to keep it simple for the first one. and. It's going to be very, very simple. Um, and I like using Python over Excel for this matter because you can generate uh, a lot of outcomes. And this is the whole idea of a Monte Carlo simulation. You generate upwards of 100,000, even more sometimes, um, outcomes in, in order to kind of ascertain uh, really your, your data in this case. So you can run a whole bunch of statistics on your outcomes and stuff. It can be really extensive. But the whole idea is to do it for many, many, many trials. Um, and I prefer using Python over Excel because it's just faster um, and more robust. So we're going to import some dependencies at first. So we need to get our data somehow. So we're going to use the pandas data reader for that. So import pandas underscore data reader dot data as web. So next, we need to work with data frames uh, for our simulation. So import pandas as pd. Um, next we're going to need some dates for our time series data so we'll use uh, date time or the date time library for that. So import date time as dt um, and we're also going to need numpy for some math stuff so import numpy as np np um, and then we can chart our output later. So we'll use matplotlib for that. So uh, import matplotlib dot whoopsie, dot pyplot as plt and we'll use a style as well. So from matplotlib uh, import style and we'll use style dot, dot use and we'll use ggplot for this one. Okay, so that should be everything we need to get going. Um, so let's start by creating our start and end date. So start equals dt dot date time. And we'll start with 20. We'll, we'll just pick arbitrary dates for this. So uh, January 3rd. Okay, terrific. And then let's do an end date. So dt dot date time. Uh, let's do 2017 and we'll do today's date so that's the 20th and we have now have our start and end date for the time series data so we'll say prices equals uh, web dot, dot data reader and we'll do it for a symbol Apple and we'll use Google as a source the data reader provides actually an array of sources you can use Google Fred, uh, you could use Yahoo, but that API is defunct, so I wouldn't try it. Probably wouldn't work. Um, and we'll use our start and end date, and we're going to use a key just to get the close column because that's all we need. And boom, we should be okay with that. So let's save this, run it, and GG. Oh, <laughs> that's my mistake. I thought I was using R. Whoopsie. So, and boom, there we go. So. What's nice about Anaconda is that you can see your variables right here, and this is really, really useful down the road. But this is our time series data. And as we can see, that's worked out great. So what we need to do now is calculate the daily returns. So we can do that extremely easily. So uh, we're going to say returns equals prices dot PCT underscore change. And we'll highlight that, run it, and we have our daily returns now, just like that. Cool. So we have enough right now. Um, actually, we have to do one more thing before we jump, uh, jump into the simulation. We need to extract the last price. So last price equals uh, prices, and then negative one. Run that, and we have the last price. Cool. Um, now we can hop into the simulation. So within the simulation, we need to define a couple variables. The first one is the number of trials. So I'll set that to a variable num uh, trials equals we're going to do a thousand in this case. So that's going to be a thousand simulations run. Maybe I should change this to 
simulations instead to make it a little bit easier to read and understand. Next, we need to define our time horizon. So essentially what I mean by this is that how many days in the future are we going to be going? So um, 252 is typically how many trading days are in a year. So I think that would be suitable. So um, num underscore days equals 252. Um, so that should be enough to start. So what we want to say is 4x in range. And we want to go all the way to total number of simulations. We're going to use a nested for loop here um, under this to kind of get the simulation going. So 4x in range. Um, the first thing that we need to do is create a count. So we're going to see this in a second. And I almost forgot to. We have to create a data frame for our simulations for all the trials. So I'm just going to call it simulation df equals uh, pd dot data frame. Okay, cool. And so the reason we're going to be keeping a count essentially is for uh, for the number of days. So we want to break a for loop when we get uh, the total number of days uh, account for. You're going to see that in a second. So um, what we need to do now is extract uh, what we need mathematically for the Monte Carlo simulation. So we need the daily standard deviation. So daily standard deviation equals uh, returns dot std and make sure that checks out. Cool. Um, after that, we also need a list to append all the prices for the given year that we're calculating. Um, so price series equals empty list. And so we need to get the list going with uh, one initial start value. Um, and I'm going to explain this in a little bit on why we need to put one value here to start. Um, I think this concept is better taught in Excel, but in practice it's better used in Python. So um, this is where it kind of gets a little bit difficult to visualize it. But what we're going to say is that the first price is equal to um, the last price of the stock times one plus mp dot random dot normal and this is the same thing basically as the norm uh, norm inf function uh, within Excel if I'm saying that right I haven't used it in a while so um, but yeah essentially what we're going to be providing as parameters here is uh, just the daily volatility so this is going to function as a random shock and this is going to allow us to generate random prices. Um, so this is going to be, um, yeah, I think daily volatility is a little bit better of a variable name. This is going to generate our future stock prices um, randomly, per se. So this is going to be why that's happening. So after that, we want to append uh, the price to the list. Uh, and after that, we want to get going on our next for loop. So uh, 4y in range num underscore days. And what we want to say is if count is equal to uh, 251, because Python's indexing uh, for pandas starts at 0, it's equal to 251. We want to break it off um, because we've reached the amount of days we've wanted. So. What we want to do after this is say price equals price underscore series count to, uh, to reference the individual element in the list and then times that random shock. And we also want to append this to the price series. Pen price. Okay. Um, we have a syntax. Oh, never mind. Um, and then we want to increment the count finally. So what we're doing right here essentially is we are taking that last price we appended to the list. And from there, we're not multiplying by the original price. We're multiplying by the last price calculated in the simulation. So it's going to do this in a loop. and essentially going to output us all of our future stock prices in this case. So the last thing we need to do is make sure our data frame has a trial. So we're gonna make sure x is uh, x is inserted into it. So, oh, I actually messed up there. Um, equals price underscore series. Sorry, I I meant to uh, 
almost put the variable in here. <laughs> My bad. Um, but that's pretty much all we're going to need uh, for this case. So let's run it and see how it works. And cool. It looks like we have our simulation data frame and we have a thousand uh, trials with 252 days of predicted data um, total because the index starts to zero as we can see here right now. So that's really cool. Um, so that's essentially our simulation and we may want to graph our simulation so we can do this very easily you can say fig equals plt dot figure to start and we can say plot uh, or excuse me plt dot plot um, our simulation data frame and this is just going to be a simple line chart and we can say plt dot show to show everything and we can run this and oh we have a variable. I think I made a typo. Okay, cool. And there we go. There's our Monte Carlo simulation. Um, so we could obviously beef up this chart, but for the sake of time, I think that I might. Uh, no, nah, I, I don't even think I'm gonna do that for now. Um, but yeah, we could get a lot more fancy with this chart. We could include the the current price of the stock. Um, let me check the time and see what we're on. Uh, we're only on 11, so yeah, why not? I'll add that too, just to show you. Um, so we can say plt dot axh line. Um, so we'll set it to y is equal to the last price. This can be in the y-axis. So last price um, color equals r red and line style be a dash. And uh, we'll add some labels too, why not? So plt.x label, pretty self explanatory. Um, so our x is going to be the day, our y is going to be price, and uh, we're also going to have um, a subtitle, which is basically just our main title of the graph so we can do that pretty easily so fig dot subtitle um, what are we gonna call it so Monte Carlo simulation and then Apple okay let's run this see if it works and boom there we go so I think this is actually really good visually to put the current price of a stock here um, in the Monte Carlo simulation because you're going to understand the probability aspect of it a little better and what we're trying to get across. So as you can see right here, um, this is what you really want to be looking at in this last specific line right here I'm pointing to. So this is going to be what should be, by your model, the, the current price of a stock for each single trial. So we could analyze all that data. We could create a distribution. We could calculate some probabilities based on if the stock... Um, fell in a different range or something like that or a certain range we could do a lot of stuff with this and I think I'll make a mini series out of this because this can get actually pretty extensive so in the next couple tutorials you can probably see stuff like uh, we'll do one with Brownian motion a Monte Carlo simulation that's a popular technique we'll do some statistical analysis of this uh, this this um, excuse me this Monte Carlo simulation and the end of day um, output of prices so this can get uh, pretty in depth and I hope I can create something like a class or something that we can use and do a whole bunch of stuff maybe in a value at risk estimation too along the way so let's uh, let's end it here and I hope everyone has a great day and rate comment and subscribe and I'll see you later goodbye